going to be the first of two videos about the normal distribution and how we use Excel to do computations on the normal distribution. So here's our problem. The weights of newborn babies born in the United States are normally distributed with a mean of 7.57 pounds and a standard deviation of 1.06 pounds. We might be interested in several questions such as, uh, what's the probability of finding a baby whose uh, birth weight is less than six pounds, or more than nine, or between seven and eight. So of course, we could ask any number of questions. So let's start with the first one. Uh, less than six pounds. Down here, I have a normal distribution curve, or a bell curve, also known as a Gaussian curve, labeled with the mean, and one standard deviation up, two standard deviations up, one down and two down from the mean, so that we can figure out what region we're truly interested in. So less than six pounds, so six pounds falls somewhere in here, and I'm interested in the area or the probability, since underneath the bell curve we're talking about area as probability, of going six pounds or less. So the red shaded region is what I'm truly interested in. In Excel, here's the command you're going to need. So it is the normal distribution command, norm.dist. And then it asks you for four things. The first thing is the X, which is the region that we cut off, the six in this particular case. The mean, which I'm just going to click on the mean. The standard deviation, you can also type it straight in. It doesn't really matter in this case. I can also just click on it. And then whether or not you're going to accumulate. Well, on the normal bell curve, we're always accumulating. And with the software Excel, it's always accumulating from your X value down. So we say yes to accumulate, so one is yes, and I hit enter. So it gives me the probability of landing in this shaded region. Another way to do this is let me get the z-score. So the z-score is the six that I'm interested in minus the mean over the standard deviation. This is now how many standard deviations we are below the mean on the standard normal curve. And now I can calculate the probability on the standard normal curve. I'm going to get exactly the same answer, but I want to show you what the command is. So it's norm.s.dist. The S here stands for standard normal distribution. And now notice that it only asks for the z-score, which I'm going to click on. And I'm always accumulating on the normal distribution. And of course, I get exactly the same, exactly the same value. So for the sake of readability, I'm going to copy just the formula here, paste it there. I'm going to copy just the formula here, paste it there. And I'll copy the formula for this one so that you can see exactly what I did and paste it here. Okay, so now let's do the next one. I'm going to come over here, let's wipe that out. Now I want to do more than nine pounds. So more than nine pounds is, let's see, nine is somewhere right in here. And so I'm looking at the region that is right of nine pounds. Oops, ignore that last little squiggle there. So in Excel, the software always reads from where we are left, so it wants to do from here down. We want to go from there up. So instead, we're going to say one minus. The whole curve adds up to one. I'm going to take one minus norm.dist of nine with my mean and my standard deviation, always accumulating. So what this part of the command would do is what my arrow is indicating, everything from nine down. Take that off of one, that gets everything from nine up. Oops, because I didn't type norm.dist. There we go. Now it's gonna make sense. And so there's my probability. So let me show the command that I did here. So let's copy that, put it there. There's the command I used. Now let's go ahead and get a z-score. I'll show you how to do this in a different way. So the z-score is the score you're interested in minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. 
So this is the number of standard deviations you are above the mean. And notice it's 1.3 and I've got one and some more standard deviations above the mean. And so now I could do the probability of more than nine on the standard normal curve. So that's going to be equals one minus norm dot s dot dist of, now I can click on my z-score, it only wants a z-score and I'm accumulating. And of course, same answer. I can get this two different ways. So if you have z-score information, norm dot s. If you have raw score information, uh, just norm dot dist. Okay. Last but not least, let's take those out of there. We're going to do between seven and eight pounds. So seven pounds is somewhere in here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So let's grab my little drawing tool here. Seven pounds is somewhere in here. Um, eight pounds is somewhere in here. And I'm interested in the shaded region somewhere in between those two. So I'm interested in this. And so in... Excel, we're going to need to use two different commands. I'm going to need to do this from the 8 down minus from 7 down. Because remember, in Excel, we're only reading to the left. So I'm going to take the higher one down minus the lower one down. So let's see what that looks like here. So that's equals norm.dist of the higher one was eight with this mean, that standard deviation and accumulates, minus norm dot dist of seven with same mean, same standard deviation and accumulate. Okay, so now I have the region falling in between those two. And of course I could do this same exact thing with z-scores. I could get the z-scores for the two and then do norm.s. I'm going to leave that up to you because I think this video is already long enough. So go to the next video if you're all good and ready. Reproduce all of these commands um, if you don't think you're ready. Talk through this with your, your lab partner so this makes sense to you.